The United States government will neither confirm nor deny the existence of UFOs. But unofficially, a stream of retired military personnel are now coming forward with critical information about unidentified craft they encountered in the line of duty. Among them, Robert Jacobs, a former Air Force cameraman who believes that there is film out there somewhere that proves that the government knows more than they are willing to tell. just come out of the most destructive war on the face of the planet, uh, World War II, 50 million dead. Uh, we had just barely gotten beyond that, and suddenly, according to documents, there were mysterious objects maneuvering in American airspace. UFO researcher and lecturer Robert Hastings has spent 22 years studying the United States' interest in and reaction to reports of UFOs. Hastings has concluded that not only is the government fooling the American public, they've been fooling themselves. I think it's not a coincidence that the phenomenon has accelerated its activity precisely at a time in human history when we've acquired nuclear weapons. I have interviewed 21 former and retired Air Force personnel associated with nuclear missile uh, squadrons who have referred to incidents involving the presence of flying saucers. That theory is based in part on the personal experiences of Robert Jacobs, a former Air Force lieutenant. In 1964, Lieutenant Jacobs claims he sat in a room at Vandenberg Air Force Base and saw a UFO that haunts him to this day. Hair's going up on the back of my neck right now thinking about it, just remembering that day. I saw something that was so strange that it changed my life. It changed the way I believe uh, about the universe and my place in it and our place in it. In 1964, Lieutenant Robert Jacobs was stationed at Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. He was in charge of a special photographic unit filming test flights of Atlas F and Minuteman missiles, both nuclear weapon delivery systems. When you launch a piece of equipment that costs four or five million dollars just for the piece of equipment and it blows up 300 yards out of the hole, we want to know, first of all, why did it blow up? So my job was to provide photographic documentation from 30 or 40 different camera positions for each launch. In November of 1964, Jacobs was assigned to film a Vandenberg missile launch using a brand new state-of-the-art telescope developed at Boston University. It was the most powerful lens the Air Force had ever used. The biggest lens we had on our M45s was 180 inches. This telescope had an effective focal length of 1,200 inches, so you can see that it's enormously bigger. It was so big, in fact, that when the missile left Vandenberg with the, the Boston University telescope in one single frame, the, just the bottom three engines on an Atlas F filled the frame. That was from a distance of about 130 nautical miles. In a top secret mission, the telescope was flown in from Boston aboard a Hercules aircraft. This is actual footage shot by Jacob's unit and only recently rediscovered in his archive. The telescope was so large, it had to be hauled to its site in an 18-wheel big rig. Jacob's crew assisted the telescope's inventor, Walter Manning, with the installation of the lens. The camera was perched on a bluff in Big Sur, 130 miles from the launch site. We walked onto the missile and we saw all three stages of powered flight. Uh, through our binoculars, we could see that happen. It was a test of a top-secret anti-missile missile, one designed to confuse enemy missiles and then go on to hit its target. The camera was programmed to follow the missile automatically and run for six minutes, long past the point where the missile was visible. Now, what we didn't know is what else we had got besides the missile. After the film was developed, Project Director Major Florenz Mansman called Jacobs into his office, and Major Mansman was not alone. There were two guys in gray suits in there, civilian clothes. They were not in the Air Force. They were from somewhere else. They never identified themselves. They could have been CIA, OSI, OSS. Jacobs was asked to watch his test film in the presence of these mysterious officials. The nose cone spread out. The warhead was quite plainly visible. Something flew into the frame. What I saw was a circular object. It was a classic flying saucer. 
and it shot a beam of something at our warhead. You have to imagine this thing is flying along at several thousand miles an hour. This stuff is flying along, and something comes into the frame and ch chasing it, and comes in like this and fires at it, and goes around like this and fires at it, and goes around like this and fires at it, and fires at it like this, and then goes back out that way. What the hell could do that? That was exactly what Major Maxman wanted to know. And he said, what was that? And I said, it looks to me like we got a UFO. And he said, you are never to say that again. As far as you're concerned, Lieutenant Jacobs, this never happened. And I was sworn to silence, reminded of the, security, of, of the severity of a security breach, and told to leave the room. 18 years went by with that image in my mind. After 18 years of silence, Jacobs felt compelled to go public. When he did, the official Air Force response was astonishing. The Air Force denied that I was ever there. There was no Lieutenant Robert M. Jacobs in the Air Force at that time. I was never at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Uh, if I was at Vandenberg Air Force Base, I was never in charge of the photo optical instrumentation section at the 1369th Photographic Squadron, right here at this base. Uh, they denied then that there was a, a tracking site at Big Sur. They denied that there was a telescope called the BU Telescope. They denied that there was a, a, a Dr. Walter Manning. They denied everything. However, Sightings has obtained documents that prove he was in the Air Force in 1964 and that he was in charge of the photo-optical instrumentation site at Big Sur. In a letter to Sightings, Florence Mansman, Lieutenant Jacobs' direct superior and the man present when the infamous UFO footage was screened, says, quote, I am writing to confirm Dr. Jacobs' account as he had described it. But by far, the most compelling evidence is this film which proves the existence of an event the Air Force continues to deny. The Air Force is probably not going to like this film, but there's nothing they can do about it. It exists, it documents the telescope, the people who are there, including me. And if there are any ramifications about it, I guess I just don't care anymore. Recent disclosures from the former Soviet Union indicate that UFO overflights of military bases and nuclear facilities have not been limited to the United States. During the 1970s and 80s, several UFOs were sighted at government installations in Russia and Siberia.